My name is Bob Olson. I'm a private investigator who's been investigating the afterlife since 1997. That was the year my father died. Uh, he was 64. I was 34. And uh, for the first time in my life, I wondered about the afterlife. I wondered where my father went, if anywhere. So since I was working as a private eye, I decided to use my skills as an investigator to search for evidence of life after death. I've now been doing that for 27 years. And today I'm going to be talking to you about why I don't want to die. Now, it's probably not what you think, uh, but it's intended to make you think. Uh, it all starts with a story. It was just before Christmas. I was watching television. I think we were watching Love Actually <laughs> for the millionth time. And uh, I was watching it with my wife, Melissa. I was laying on the couch. Uh, she was in a recliner. All of a sudden, my arm went, fell asleep. So I stopped the movie so that I could shake some blood into my arm. And as I was doing that, all of a sudden I realized I couldn't feel my leg. So I get up and I'm shaking my leg and my arm and trying to get the blood flowing. And as I'm doing this, I recognized that all of a sudden my whole right side of my face went numb. Uh... I'm old enough to know what that means. That's not a good thing. It's a sign of a stroke. I told Melissa about it and she immediately grabbed her phone and said, do you want me to call the ambulance? I attempted to say yes to her. And as I did, I realized that I was slurring my words for one, but not only was I slurring my words, but I was having trouble pulling the words from my brain to my mouth. I couldn't really find the words that I wanted to say. I was able to slur out that, yes, call the ambulance. I uh, was standing at this point, so I decided to sit down in a chair. So I sat down and I started to panic a little bit. I recognized, oh boy, this isn't good. Things aren't good here. Melissa, who's always good in an emergency, <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, she just did. She put her hand on my shoulder. She stared me in the eye. She said, Breathe deeply, you're gonna be all right. The ambulance is on its way. So I just closed my eyes, started to do some deep breathing, and I immediately called to my father, who's in spirit, of course, and I just said, Dad, help me, be with me. I knew, because of the work that I've been doing for 27 years now, I knew that he was beside me and using whatever powers he had to help me through that moment. Now, I knew he couldn't save me. If it was my time to go, it was my time to go. And so, I, and I did wonder if at any moment I might be beside him and might see him again. Certainly, that's what happens with a lot of people who have had near-death experiences, is that all of a sudden they're in a crisis like this, and the next thing they know, they're with, they're sitting beside a spirit, <laughs> a person in spirit. So, I'm kind of going through this, talking to my father. I open my eyes again and I see flashing of red lights on the wall. Melissa looks up, she goes, oh, the ambulance is here. So I decided to stand up. Uh, my back was to the door, so I decided I move over to the sofa where I can face them as they're walking in. Three EMTs walk in, they got all kinds of equipment. And one of them introduces himself as James and starts asking me questions. Just as he's doing this, all of a sudden, all the numbness in my face and all the numbness in my arm, hand, leg, and foot just disappeared, just melted away. It was a little bit of a relief, and suddenly I was able to talk again. So the EMTs didn't really get to hear me slurring my words and having trouble talking as far as they were concerned, once they started to do tests and ask me questions, everything had gone away by this time. I spent the next 15 minutes going through those tests and I eventually just say, you know, I'm sorry that you came all this way. Paul, I appreciate you coming so quickly, but I'm not gonna go to the hospital. So, okay. And so I'm walking them to the door. As I'm wishing them a Merry Christmas, all of a sudden, uh, the first thing that happened, happened, everything happened in reverse. This time, right around the right side of my lips just got all tingly. And then quickly, I started to slur my words again. And then my whole face went numb. 
and then it went down my arm, into my fingers, down my leg, into my toes. And now it was worse than it was before. Uh, I was really now having trouble thinking of the words that I wanted to say and pulling them to my mouth. <laughs> However that works, I don't know. But that was what I recognized was happening. Once I realized that, I somehow garbled uh, the words that, okay, I guess I'm coming with you after all. So James said, can you walk? And I was like, yeah, I think so. Uh, we'll find out. I wasn't being macho about it. I was really just upset with my body. <laughs> and I didn't want to give in to it that my body wasn't working the way that I wanted it to. So the next thing I do is I just decide I'm going to somehow figure out how to walk with this leg that is all asleep and this foot that I can't feel anymore. And I'm going to go down the steps and, and try walking. The, the EMT, James, is asking me, you know, how come you're limping? I'm like, I can't feel my leg, my foot. Um, I grab a hold of the, the ambulance to help me walk. And I get to the back and then there's these stairs that go up and I'm like, oh crap. So I use the left side of my body to pull myself up the stairs, get my leg on there and then use my left leg to go up again, pull myself up. And then when I get in there, there's a gurney. I get into the gurney, the EMTs strap me in so I don't fall out of it on the way. And, and they immediately start putting these stickers all over my chest and hooking wires up to them so they can check my heart rate and all that. We're probably still in my driveway for about 10 minutes before uh, they even start to go. Eventually we leave and I notice that my symptoms are just getting worse and worse. And I'm really having a hard time talking now. I sound like I'm intoxicated, but I haven't had anything to drink. So I'm slurring my words having trouble pulling the words from my brain. And then James, the EMT, asked me, you know, what do you do for work? And I said, I'm a writer. And he goes, oh. And he looks at the other EMT. That's not good. Uh, and I think, oh, crap. And so I asked him, what's going on here? And he said, your, the left side of your brain might have a blood clot uh, that's impeding the blood flow. And it's in the area of your brain that involves communication. And I realized why that was a problem because my whole life is all about communication. I write books, I write articles. I was all ready to start doing Afterlife TV again, reboot Afterlife TV. I was so excited about it. And all of a sudden I realized that I might not have that opportunity anymore. And these are the things that were going through my mind both before the ambulance got there, and now as I was in the ambulance, I could see Melissa's car. They wouldn't allow her to come with me, so I could see she was following the ambulance. And I'm thinking to myself, did I run out of time? And I remember Dr. Wayne Dyer, who's a great author, who who used to talk about don't die with your music still in you. And I realized I had, I got a lot of music still in me. I, I have more books, more articles, more videos to create. I have so much more that I have learned about life after death that I want to share with people. Now I wasn't sure if I had any more time to do it. And I thought to myself, if I do, I'm really going to reboot Afterlife TV and I'm going to get as much out while I have time to do that. The other thing that was going through my mind as I saw Melissa following the ambulance was we didn't get to do a lot of the things that we wanted to do. Uh, earlier in life, we couldn't afford to go traveling. But we wanted to travel, experience the world, and we didn't have the money to do that. When I finally figured out how to make a living doing uh, work in this field, then I didn't want to lose momentum with it. Now I was really busy. And then you know, we got dogs, and then we couldn't go away because we couldn't find anybody to take care of the dogs. And then COVID happened. <laughs> and then, right, there's always an excuse. There's always something that's happening that, that delays everything. And I, I just wondered if I 
uh, I waited too long. And did I wait too long to come out with more books? Did I wait too long to travel with Melissa? I had just turned 60 in 2023. I still felt like I probably had a good 25 years in me. And now I questioned it. We finally, the ambulance gets to the hospital and they bring me in. We have to go through triage of some sort and then they rush me to the ER. As they bring me into a room in the emergency room, all of a sudden my symptoms just melted away again. And so first I could feel my face again, my lips. I wasn't slurring my words. Then all of a sudden I could feel my arm and my fingers. I could feel my leg and my toes and everything just went away. And I just said to the EMTs, I was like, I'm so glad that I still have my symptoms because now, you know, when the doctor sees me, I'll have symptoms. How many times have we gone to the doctor and we don't have symptoms anymore? And they're like, what am I supposed to do? So long story short, my symptoms never come back, but they have to, of course, put me through a, a CT scan um, they wanted to put me through an MRI and an EKG, sorry, an echocardiogram. They didn't have anybody at night who could do the MRI or the echocardiogram, so I had to stay overnight, and they put me in a room and all that. The CT scan, they could do right away, and I had that done, and even during that, they, had, they put this, they call it a contrast, it's a dye that they put into your body. And I had never had that, and I had heard that some people can have allergic reactions to it and die even from that. And so I was a little bit nervous about that. Every time I got nervous in any of these scenarios, I just closed my eyes, say, help me, Dad. And, and again, it somehow calmed me to know that he was with me and was helping me. And I knew that he was helping to calm me as well. I've learned enough about life after death to know that this is how it works. And so to answer the question, why was I afraid to die? What I will say is it was not because of what I've learned about the afterlife, because what I've learned about the afterlife is that when we die, it's a very peaceful place. We immediately experience extreme peacefulness and we feel love, more love than we've ever felt as human beings. We feel even a sense of joy and freedom from the confines of our flesh, of our bodies. And there's all these euphoric feelings uh, when people will just say have had near-death experiences that they tell us about. I knew from those and all the readings that I've had with mediums and even the experiences that I've had like past life regressions and something called a life between lives regression where you actually go into the spiritual dimension the life between lives, right? I've had these experiences. I knew what that felt like. I knew that it is a peaceful place to be. So that was not my concern. My concern was that I still had a lot of work to do. I still had a lot of living to do with Melissa and my friends and family members, even my dogs. And I wasn't ready to go yet. I still had a lot of music left in me. I had a lot of teaching to do. I had a lot that I wanted to share with you, my audience. And for that reason, I didn't want to die. I say this, even if you're, I was, I'm 60 now, you're probably much younger than me, perhaps. And you might be saying, well, I'm only 20 or 30 or 40. And so I have a lot, I have my whole life ahead of me. But one of the things that I've learned working in this field with many people who have lost loved ones to all sorts of causes of death is that we never know how long we have. I had uh, a friend named Rick who had cancer. I believe it was thyroid cancer. And he treated traditionally the chemo and radiation. And he got through all that and then Five years after the treatment, he had that, uh, the tests again to recognize that the cancer had not come back. And he was celebrating that. And he was out on the highway. And one of the things Rick used to do, just for safety reasons, is that if he ever had to use the phone, he would pull over into the, into the breakdown lane. And he would talk on the phone just because it was safer. 
this is still early cell phones anyway, but he did that. He had to make a phone call, pulled over to the side of the road on the highway. And when he did, there was this 18 wheeler truck driver who was driving down the road and another 18 wheeler was coming by him and he came too close and his mirror, their mirror is smashed. And the truck who smashed his mirror just kept on going. And so this truck driver was, was really upset. So he's like beating up to try to see the license plate of the truck who hit him. And he's trying to find a pencil and a paper to write down the license plate. And in doing so, he veers off the road and hits Rick's car and kills him instantly. And I think, isn't that just life? He beats his cancer, but he's killed in a car accident. The point of the story is that we just never know. I know a lot of people from Afterlife TV who have lost their children at very young ages. I had a five-year-old cousin who died. Uh, people who die in their teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, for all sorts of reasons, car accidents, health reasons, crazy accident you know, that you wouldn't even think of, murder. And there's lots of causes that can take our lives and we never know when that's gonna happen. So that's the point of this. I'm not afraid to die because I know death uh, in the spiritual dimension is a wonderful thing, but I don't want to die because I have a lot to do. And my guess is that you have a lot that you would like to still do in your life as well. And so that's really the point of this. If learning more about life after death is something that you're interested in, if you're on YouTube, I hope that you'll subscribe. Otherwise, uh, one of the things you can do is you can sign up for my newsletter. You can do that by going to bobolsonconnect.com. Now, if you noticed right here, <laughs> I can't do that. All right, there we go. I did it. Bob Olson Connect. You see the logo there. Bob Olson Connect is bobolsonconnect.com. You can go to bobolsonconnect.com. And right there, you can just enter your email and hit subscribe. That's free. And... Whenever I do a new video for Afterlife TV, you'll get an announcement for that. Now, Bob Olson Connect is something that I've been doing for the past year. I literally started in February of 2023, and I've written over 90, I think about 90 articles on that site. A lot of them are free. Uh, they're the ones that where I write about life lessons that I've learned, so I tell stories and tell the life lesson that I learned from those true stories. Those are all free. The, the articles that I've written about life after death and my investigation of life after death and all the conclusions that I've drawn and everything that I've learned about it are for paid subscribers only. And yet it's only $10 a month and $100 a year. So $8 and something a month if you do the $100 a year. But it's like a master's course in the afterlife. And so these are very in-depth articles that you can read. You can see what's there. You can read the beginning of them and recognize if that's something that you want to do. So just, again, go to bobolsonconnect.com. One of the things that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be offering extended episodes that when I do an Afterlife TV episode, I won't do it today, but when I do an Afterlife TV episode, I will do an extra 15 or 20 minutes for Bob Olson Connect paid subscribers only just to give them another something extra special. The other thing I'll let you know is that uh, I founded this site. It's called Best Psychic Directory. It's got the best psychics and mediums in the world. We have over 800 psychics and mediums there. They have all been vetted by me. Uh, I'm very proud of that site. I'm very proud of the people who are on that site. So I hope you'll check it out. And then I'll also tell you about uh, my books if you haven't read them, Answers About the Afterlife. I wrote that after I had been investigating the afterlife for 15 years. So I answer 150 of the most common questions based on uh, all the investigation that I had done and the evidence that I had found. Uh, later, a few years later, I wrote this book called The Magic Mala. The Magic Mala is about 
everything that I learned about life while investigating the afterlife. I created a fictional story to help teach those principles. Most people who have read it really love it. And so if you want to learn what I learned about life while investigating the afterlife. If you're not familiar with Afterlife TV, I've done a lot of interviews on here. You'll see all these past guests that I have had over the years. You might want to check some of them out. Very famous people like Brian Weiss, Anita Morjani, Eben Alexander, Paul Selig, James Van Prague. I'm going to be having a lot of these guests come back and join me in talking about particular subjects about life after death that we can teach to you so that you understand them better. Uh, so I'll be asking a lot of those people back. I'll be having some new guests along the way. And my favorite guest of all time <laughs> is my wife, Melissa, and she's going to be joining me for a lot of episodes as well. What's great about having Melissa on is that she has been with me throughout the past 27 years. She has learned as much about life after death as I have. She has edited all my articles, edited all my books. She's had a lot of the same experiences that I've had. And she just comes at all of these subjects with a little different perspective than I have. I came at this from the point of view of someone who was skeptical about life after death. She was never really skeptical about life after death. And so together we get to talk about a lot of these subjects and she brings something very valuable to the table in doing that. So I look forward to having Melissa on and being able to converse with her about so many of these subjects. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I hope, again, if you're on YouTube, you'll subscribe. Uh, if not, you'll go to Bob Olson Connect and sign up for our email announcements of new episodes. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you have a great day. All right. Bye-bye.